Surely I will remember the wonders of the Lord. I will, I will meditate also of all that work and talk of that noise. The way of God is in the sanctuary. Who, who is so great? A God as our God. Amen.
Anybody else?
The doors, can you lift them in, please?
Brother Rayel Cherry and Brother Roger Morris. Those ministries who have not turned in a yearly report, please do so. Forms are available at the church office. We want to congratulate Sister Sybil Belton of the nursing ministry and the Jesse Choir for uh, winning the Queen Contest for Christian Fellowship. <laughs> On yesterday, the Women of Purpose uh, went to the Real House um, to fellowship with the women there. They provided gift bags and coats that we collected from our Abyssinian family, and they thank you for your support. We were really blessed by the word from Brother McLeod and David S. Dorothy Clark. Then we were truly blessed when six of the young women accepted the Lord Jesus Christ as their personal Savior when the doors of the church were open. We want to congratulate Trustee Alton Powell and his wife, Linda Powell, uh, whose grandson, Makai Powell, was selected to have his picture displayed on billboards, buses, and Facebook for the advertisement for North Star Academy. It states, your child goes to college, choose North Star Academy. If Sister Priscilla Fuller is here, please see Trustee Robinson in, in the trustee's office before you leave church today. There will be a women's meeting at both services on next Sunday, the 22nd, and a men's uh, meeting as well. Uh, Brianna Wilkins, one of our young members, is selling Girl Scout cookies in the Thomasville Hill Annex starting today, so you can stop down at the service. The cost is $4 a box. And yes, there will be a Super Bowl party here on Sunday, February 1st. 2015 in the Thomas O'Neill Annex. All are welcome. This afternoon at 3.30 p.m., Simmons Scholarship will sponsor a Martin Luther King Day service. The guest preacher will be Reverend Antonio Porter, pastor of First Hope Hall Baptist Church in Newburgh. The music will be rendered by our combined youth choir. At 9.30 a.m. on next Sunday, we will have our Sunday School Promotion Day. We invite you to join us as our youth share what they have learned during the year 2014. On um, another note, those of you who have not received your 2014 contribution statements, you should uh, see the clerk in the office. We thank you for the last Sunday's financial report, and that concludes these announcements. Good morning. I would just like to say that our, for our church anniversary, the colors are black and white. The assessments are $35. The $35 is the most important part, but the best part is having you here to fellowship with us and lifting up the name of Jesus. So come on out, bring your envelopes, and come and fellowship with us and have a blessed day for you. Good morning. Our speakers for that day at 7 30 will be Re Reverend Rasheen Thomas from the Mount Pleasant Baptist Church at 7 30. 10 30 speaker will be Reverend Norman Gamble from the New York City Baptist Church from Florence, South Carolina. And we just hope you help, hope you be here to help us enjoy that day and to be able to just know the name of God and thank Him for keeping these doors for many eight long years. Thank you. Good morning, church. To Dr. Simmons and everyone here, but here, good morning again. Uh, I'm here to uh, welcome the businesses. If we have any business, will you please stay? Tell us where you, if you have a church home or where you're from, please stay. Okay, no businesses. I haven't seen it, but we fellowship with one another. What a fellowship.
brothers, the brothers are going to have a short meeting in the sanctuary here. But please, brothers, stay. Now, um, the man of God let us know that the church is anniversary, and Brother Brown and Sister Brown have told us what our assessments are. So let's get these things together and let's look forward to a grand time. This Friday night at 7 o'clock will be our first deacon meeting of the year, and at 8 o'clock will be on the joint board. Please come out and bring a report. Let us continue to pray for one another. God is good, not some of the time, but all of the time. Let us pray for each other. God bless you. Good morning. Let me thank God for those of you who are here this morning. In spite of the inclement weather, because I know some who saw the ice early and decided they were going to spend the rest of the day home. And then the Lord turned the ice to rain. Amen. And it's turned out to be a, a day that we could get here and share together in worship. Stephen Williams said, on the first Sunday, we'll be celebrating our 98th church anniversary. That's two years away from being 100 years old. Amen. And uh, we're looking forward to that day. Our deacon and Sister Brown are leaving us in our 98th church anniversary. Uh, the colors are very simple and easy, black and white. Amen. And the money is not overbearing, just $35. Amen. Amen. And so we pray that God will bless us, that we can give our church a good birthday party on that day. Amen. Reverend uh, Thomas from Mount Pleasant will be our early morning preacher. And Reverend Gamble from New Ebenezer Baptist Church in uh, uh, Florence, South Carolina will be our 11 or 1030 preacher. And so we're looking forward to a great and glorious day. Amen. Amen. This afternoon, uh, the Simmons Scholarship and Community Service Corporation will be sponsoring our annual Martin Luther King Day celebration. Absinia and several other churches have come together for that. And as you know, one of our purposes is to celebrate the life and legacy of Dr. King. And the other is to raise scholarship funds for our young people. Amen? Yeah. And uh, the preacher will be Reverend Antonio Porter of the First Hopewell Baptist Church. And so we're looking forward to them coming. Our, our young people, along with other young people, will form the choir that will present the music this afternoon. Amen? Yeah. And uh, we're looking forward to it. And for those of you who will come and make a contribution, make your checks payable to Simmons Scholarship, it is a tax-deductible uh, contribution. Amen? We are 501c3, and, uh, and we appreciate all that you do for us. Thank you so much for your cards and your calls and other acts of kindness uh, to my wife and her family, and she'll... Uh, talk about that probably more when she comes, but uh, in the passing of her sister, Sister Dorita Woods, uh, the wake will be tomorrow. Uh, the viewing will be from 4 to 7 p.m. The funeral will be on Tuesday. There'll be a viewing on Tuesday from 10 to 11, and the funeral service is at 11 in the Plata, Maryland. Amen? If you need information, see Sister Classen, uh, in the clerk's office, she can give you all the addresses. If you have cards or resolutions or anything you want to send, get them to me uh, before the day is over because right after the Martin Luther King celebration, I will be leaving to go down to Maryland. Amen? Also, I want to ask if you would pray for my family in Georgia. I got worried and I verified it as I spoke to my mother this morning. Uh, believe it or not, in Cairo, Georgia, there was a drive-by shooting. 
Four people were shot, one was killed, and the young man that was killed was my nephew, my brother Stanley Simmons, and asking that you will pray they were at a car show and some deranged people who don't have nothing better to do did what they did. But brothers and sisters, these are the times in which we are living. Amen? And so we ask him that you will uh, pray. Uh, now there will be Bible study Tuesday night. I won't be back by then, but there will be Bible study. I need you to be true to your Bible study. Amen? One of our preachers or deacons will be teaching and uh, we ask you to please, ma'am, and please, sirs, uh, be true to your Bible study. All right, we have a queen. Amen. Amen. Maybe, maybe I ought to say we have another queen. Sister Ella Taylor represented us well, and on uh, Friday night, she passed the crown and the baton on to Sister Sybil Belton. And I'd like for her to stand and take her part. Take her walk. Give us some walking music as the queen. Let's stand up and receive her. Amen. She's representing Abyssinia. And uh, she's going to have some words of thanks at, at this time. Good morning. To my Abyssinia family, I truly would like to thank you. Words can express the way I felt on Friday and the way I'm feeling now. It's all because of you. I would like for everyone to give each other a hand. I worked hard and you worked hard as well. Um, to Stephen and Ash and to Deidre, I thank them on Friday, I thank them today as well. From the bake sale, from the uh, the breakfast, from the Patriot List, from um, the flyers. Thank you so much, Joyce. She did all the flyers, the envelopes, everything that just the paperwork that you saw. It all came from Joyce, and I would like to say thank you. Great job. Um, thank you. Some people have went over and beyond the call of duty. And I don't want to call no names, but I just want to say thank you. You know who you are. Um, to my pastor, thank you so much for your support and um, your leadership and guidance. And also to Deaconess um, Taylor. I'm not sure if she's here. She didn't make it. But um, I just want to say thank you. And um, I'll be coming back for your help again. <laughs> thank you. Love you all. for allowing uh, them to put her in the, the uh, Queen contest because all of the funds that are raised go to scholarship. And they raised over $5,000 on Friday night. <laughs> Amen. Thank you. Don't forget the Martin Luther King celebration at 3.30. I need you all to come back and share with us. Amen. It's not going to be a long program. It's just going to be long enough. Amen? And so let us come and let us share. Now, if you are interested in becoming a trained, uh, certified enroller, that is to, y'all may come on and take a seat, that is to uh, help enroll people into the health care program, uh, please give your name and address and phone number and social security number to Ms. Classic and uh, she will submit it to the Department of Health and Human Services. And the reason they have to do a background check on you is because other people that you help to enroll, you will be, re be receiving their private information, amen? Like their social security numbers, and we need to know, you know, that you don't have no bad intentions, amen, when you're doing that, amen? God bless you, and God keep you as I
being unpalatable. Uh,
church say amen. amen. This first Sunday is church anniversary and the mass choir sings during the church anniversary. So I need the president of the mass choir to uh, see me before we leave today so that we can get ready for that rehearsal that we're going to need before the first Sunday and make sure that uh, our musician is available to cover it. Amen? Amen. <laughs> we'll have our music by Nail Course, and after that, we'll hear from our own South Harrison. Amen. 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 Thank you. 
tried leaving on a whole lot of folk. And I found out that I could not trust in leaning on them. But when I learned to lean on Jesus, I had a leaning post that would never give away. And then what I like about it, the whole world can lean on it at the same time. Can I get a witness? Anybody else? Join Sister Belton in thanking all of you for your contributions, those who had the patrons list and helping her. And Abyssinia, along with your help, was able to report $3,117 for the Queen Contest. We want to thank you. And for those young people who had questions, the Youth Praise Team will be doing devotion this afternoon, so we're looking forward to that. Amen? Tis the old ship of Zion Tis the old ship of Zion
Isaiah chapter 29, I want to read verses 7 and 8. Isaiah chapter 29, verses 7 and 8. This is my message in honor of the life and legacy of Dr. Martin Luther King. Isaiah chapter 29, and for those of you who were not here this morning, we began early morning service with a the first sermon of a five sermon series that we will be preaching at the 7.30 services over the next uh, four or five weeks entitled, Lord, why didn't my mountain move? And so come out and share in that. Uh, Isaiah chapter 29, verses seven and eight. And the multitude of all the nations that fight against Ariel, even all that fight against her and her munition, and that distress her shall be as a dream of a night vision. It shall even be as when an hungry man dreameth, and behold, he eateth, but he awaketh, and his soul is empty. Or as when a thirsty man dreameth, and behold, he drinketh, but when he awaketh, and behold, he is faint, and the soul has appetite, so shall the multitude of all the nations be that fight against Mount Zion. Listen to what he says. He says, when your enemies come up and fight against you, it's going to be just like them having a dream that they ate while they were, slept, were sleeping and waking up and they're still hungry. They were thirsty and dreamt that they drank and when they woke up, they were still thirsty. And I want to preach today from the subject, Three Kings and Their Dreams. Three Kings and Their Dreams. As the nation celebrates the birthday of Dr. Martin Luther King, Jr., it also pauses to salute his dream of universal equality and freedom. He, he had a, a dream, if you will, that there would be equality everywhere. It is a time when each in his own way reflect upon the prerequisites of the dream and to measure the progress we have made toward making that dream a reality. I, I preached on one occasion, after 50 years, what has happened to the dream. My brother this morning is preaching from the subject, what do you want? He told me about a story that uh, they, they met, Dr. King and the folk in Albany, Georgia met during the Civil Rights Movement and he had five things on the list that African Americans wanted in order to bring about equality in Albany, Georgia and all but four of those things are in enforcement right now. In Albany, Georgia, they have a black police chief, they have a black superintendent, they have a black mayor in the county of Darden, they have a black commissioner, three out of the, or four out of the seven members of the city commission and county commission are black. The, 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 the county police chief is black. And, and, and the question is, you've got all of that, so what do you want now? Dr. King articulated the feelings of millions when he pronounced that he had a dream. And for his dream was the same as that of millions uh, that he represented. A dream of a nation where men, women, boys, and girls will be judged by the content of their character rather than the color of their skin. Now, over 51 years after that day in 1963, when Dr. King told the nation of his dream, the essential elements of the dream continues to motivate an, 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 an entire nation to work toward the realization of a day of peace and brotherly love. Dr. 
king is dead only because his dream was directly conflicted with the dream of those who were the power brokers of our nation. Malcolm X was assassinated, Marcus Garvey was deported, Angela Davis was jailed, and Nat Turner was hanged. Why? Because their dream was not the dream of the established powers in America. The dreams of our uh, adversaries have been uh, predicated upon our subjugation and our assimilation. Yeah, the crimes of, uh, uh, of these kings represents our oppression, but Dr. King lifted our hope beyond the tyrannical edicts of our oppression and pointed us to another king who sits high and looks low. Dr. King focused our faith on a heavenly king who would one day bring us into the promised land of that dream. This is our hope and this is the promise of the future that despite our circumstances, we will be free one day. So let us praise God for Jesus who gives us the victory, amen, of freedom one day because there he said those whom the Lord has set free they are free indeed. Our text today considers the prophet Isaiah as he makes a prophetic statement supported by two illustrations about efforts to fight against the people of God. Initially, Isaiah is making a millennial projection, writing about the ultimate futility of fighting against the people of God in the last days. Yeah, he envisions Jesus on his throne in the new Jerusalem, surrounded by the forces of Satan, but talks of the foolishness of Satan's efforts. Yeah, in other words, to try, try to keep, in other words, try to, to try to keep down the people of God is like an empty dream in the night. That's really what Isaiah said. It is as still as dreaming of water and walking away thirsty, dreaming of food and yet walking away hungry. Isaiah's dream, while prophetic in nature, speaks to our present conditions very vividly. Those who dream of keeping down the people of God are dreaming an empty dream in the night. So let us consider the aspirations and dreams of three kings as they relate to the destiny of Israel. The dreams of these three kings are, are tied closely with the fate of all oppressed people everywhere. First of all, the dream of the first king who was Pharaoh in Egypt was to build a powerful nation steeped in military might, bathed in culture, and showered with specimens of engineering excellence. The success of Egypt was predicated upon subjugation, say subjugation, and domination of a slave class. In other words, it required a workforce that had been stripped of its ability to think and to fight back. The only way they could enslave Israel, the only way they could get Israel to do what they wanted them to do was the fact that they had to be stripped of their ability to think and fight back. Though Egypt had great libraries, Egypt was the seat of the cultural development and, and, its, and its mathematical genius could not be matched by anybody in the world. But the Israelites were in complete ignorance, segregation in the land of Goshen. I need you to see this. The pyramids were built with Israeli hands, but they were designed by Egyptian minds. In other words, the Israelites did the work, and the Egyptians did the thinking. When you cannot think for yourself, he who thinks for you is your master. 
And, and that's what happened in, in Egypt. They, they convinced Israel, y'all ain't smart enough, y'all can't think for yourself, so let us think for you. And as a result, we become your master. The Egyptians not only destroyed the thinking capacity of slaves, but they attempted to, de to destroy their ability to fight back by destroying the men. And you remember when they sent out a decree that all of the boy babies would be what? Put to death. They would be put and drowned in the Nile. As black people, we have experienced the impact of the method of that king when we were kept in subjection for many years because our enemies were successful at keeping us away from knowledge and the truth about ourselves. They, they didn't write about us in the history books and when they did, they say that we were nothing more than a problem before and since the Civil War. They said we were less than a, than a human being. Can you get a witness? That that's the way. And so every time you read about yourself in American history books, you didn't really read the truth about yourself. Uh -huh. They passed laws to make it illegal for us to read and to gain access to knowledge. Not only did they hide books from you, but they made it illegal for you to read if you found the book. Huh? And, and to make matters work, they kept us down by destroying the leadership capacity of our men folk. And reduced them to, to fathers and studs, and, 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 and a brother from fathers to studs, and from breadwinners, they just made them cradle rockers. rockers. Can you imagine that? They took a whole nation of black men and say, you don't have time to be fathers, just be baby makers. Just be studs. And you know what? Their plan worked for a while. But thank God the Lord had another plan. That though they tried to, to keep Israel away from military science, reading and writing, the Lord had another plan. Though they tried to, to destroy all of the male leaders by drowning them in the river Nile, the Lord had another plan. And though they tried in vain to keep us in the darkness of ignorance, somebody got a hold to the copies of an old Bible. Huh? Torn and tattered and, and they stole away in the midnight and ran the evil where says, the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. If we are to keep alive our dream of, of freedom, we must lay hold on the tools of education, scholarship, and training. And, and, and don't let nobody fool you, brothers and sisters. Just, just, just look at the difference in, in the salaries of a person who graduated from college and one who only graduated from high school. Or one who graduated from high school versus one who was a dropout from high school. We must continue to expand our minds and climb higher than we can imagine. We, we, we must promote a strong image for our young black men. Yeah. Don't fool yourself. Last Sunday when, when the uh, Clarewell Grace Scholarship gave out their scholarship, I was proud for those young ladies. But I had to honestly ask myself, where are the young men? Well, where are the fathers of our children? Where are the husbands of our wives, the future husbands of our wives? These are questions that we must answer. We got to train our boys to become responsible protectors of our heritage. Huh? Guardians of our race and the progenitors of our future. Don't you know if the black race is going to survive, black boys got to follow some babies 
is with the applied words. But when we travel this road, there is no keeping us down as long as God is in front of us. I hear Isaiah's prophecy raining to dream of keeping such a people down is like an empty dream in the night. It's futile and hopeless. Just like a man dreaming he ate, but when he woke up he was still hungry. That's what it's like to fight against the people of God. But then the second king, the second king was the Babylonian king Nebuchadnezzar. Now the Babylonians had dreams of building a, an expansive empire that encompassed many nations. They, they, they came and they conquered. But their dreams also depended upon the subjugation of others. Watch this now. The methodology of the Babylonian was different from that of the Egyptians. It was less obvious and therefore more dangerous. You see, whether it's overt or covert, racism is the same. Can you get a witness? One is just more dangerous than the other. Yeah, the, the enemy who comes and says, I don't like you, I can deal with him. But the enemy who pretends to be my friend and stab me in my back, that, that's the one I have a problem with. Say amen, somebody. And don't let nobody fool you. You got some folk, they'll laugh and grin in your face and they'll talk about you behind your back. And so, this is the, the, the technique used by the, 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 the Babylonians. The Egyptians destroyed the ability of slaves to fight back, but the Babylonians destroyed their will to fight back. Through re-education <laughs> huh? of their minds so that they could become one with their enemy. <laughs> let, me, let, me, let, me, let me break that down for you. The, 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 the Egyptians had a different methodology than the Babylonians. The Egyptians destroyed the Jews' ability to fight back. But the Babylonians destroyed their will to fight back by brainwashing them so that they could feel comfortable with their enemies. Can, can I show you some black folk in here? In this text. Where, whereas Egypt segregated itself from the slaves, Babylonians took the best and bright minds in Israel and integrated them into the Babylonian society. Don't y'all remember? Those of you who are just a little bit younger than me, when they came over from the white school and picked out the best of y'all's minds and took y'all over to the white school and y'all thought y'all were son. I'm only one of five students over here. All they were trying to get you to do was assimilate. Feel comfortable being with them. Therefore, they made you take the nappy out your hair and, and put something that straightened out your hair so you could shake your head like them. Y'all yeah, might as well pray with me. I'm going to preach this time. This is the only Martin Luther King sermon I'm going to preach this year. And, and, and I'm going to deal with this one. This is what the Lord gave me. So that's what you're going to have to take this morning. They wanted to assimilate them. They wanted you to, to lose your, your, your cultural identity. And then they wanted you to, to, to talk like them. And, and, and I don't understand because sometimes they told me, and I ain't going to tell y'all who told me, they told me that it doesn't matter how properly we speak, we still not speaking the king's English. And, 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 and there was a time, Michael, when you could identify us on the phone even when you didn't see us. Because we have a certain dialect in our culture. Say amen, somebody. Amen. That, that you could identify them. So what they did was, they, they tried to integrate them. Whereas Egypt kept education away from the slave, the Babylonians gave them education. 
but one that will make them comfortable with the status quo. And that's why folk back in those days were telling Martin, Martin, we don't want you here. You need to just go on about your business. That's why when he came to Newark, the only two places they would allow him to speak, one was at Malcolm X Shabazz there in Southside High School, and the other one was right here at Abyssinia Baptist Church which were the last two places he spoke before he went to Memphis and died. Even in the South, there were some preachers who told him, now, it's not time now. You're ahead of your time. You need to wait. And that's why he preached the circle, why we can't wait. Among those exposed to this re-education, y'all know him, Daniel and the three Hebrew boys, Meshach, Shedrach, huh, and Abednego. The first phase of the re-education was to change their name. Huh? They changed Daniel's name to Belshazzar. And the three young boys were Shadrach and Meshach and Abednego. Their original names were, were Hananiah, Meshach, and Azariah. They, they were to become, they become Babylonians in every respect and their name that they would not disassociate themselves with their uh, Jewish background. What did they do to us? Huh? First thing they did when they brought you over here was change your name. I'm sorry, but when you left Africa, nobody over there was named Stephen and John and Mary and Sue. Can't get a witness? So, so we shared the experience of this Babylonian mythology. And, and there's not, uh, are there not some blacks today who have turned their back on the dream of freedom because they now consider themselves one with their adversaries? And then y'all, y'all have the audacity to brag, oh, I'm the only black manager in, at my job. If you're the only black and you've been there and have brought nobody else up with you, you ought to be ashamed of yourself. You, you bragging because you're the, you're the only one. So what they did was they kind of allowed themselves to be assimilated into that mainstream society. Can I get a witness? And, and, and more of us, as, as more of us achieve middle class status, too many of us neglect the appreciation of our race and heritage. Thinking that this is a requirement of Dr. King's Dream. When Dr. King said he had a dream that one day little black boys and little black girls would be able to walk hand in hand, he wasn't telling you you got to be less black or act more like other folk. But that the value of your work of all races ought to be appreciated. Men, three other races ought to walk down the street and we can hang out together because we appreciate and respect each other's race and culture. I don't have to act like nobody else in order to hang out with somebody else. But now I have to admit, now y'all, I'm going to admit something. I'm, I'm, I'm confessing this morning. I do have two voices. I want you to know that. When I talk to y'all, I talk in another way. But when they call me, I talk another way. The Morris Brown come out of me. Amen. Huh? Yeah, yeah, yeah. When I, when I speak to y'all, you know, we talk like we do in the hood. And I want them to know when they're speaking to me, they are speaking to an intelligent black man who knows how to articulate, who knows how to enunciate, one who knows how to speak correctly. Like, like, like the keys on the piano. I dare you get up there and play Star Spangled Banner and not use the black and the white keys. 
Okay? God, God used them all. That's the dream, brothers and sisters. The Babylonians had their plan, but the Lord had his own plan. While many of, of the children of Israel were re-educated to the Babylonian way, Daniel and the three Hebrew boys refused to be re-educated. You know, Daniel refused to, to, to close his prayer book and, and turn his back on God, even though they threw him in the lion's den. Three Hebrew boys, even though they threw him in the fire furnace, said that God that we serve, he's able. To deliver us. He's able. I know he's able. He's able to lift up our down heads. He's able to wipe tears away from your eyes. I tell you, God is able. Yes, sir. But then finally, brothers and sisters, there's a third king. I told you about the king in Egypt, told you about the Babylonian king, but there is a third king. And, and this king brings with him the dream of a kingdom. Not made with hands. Can I do witness? Yeah, he brings with him the dream of a building, brothers and sisters, but one who is not made by hands. He brings hope to our hearts and a dream to our minds. Unlike the Egyptians that destroyed the ability of the Babylonians, and uh, yeah, that, that destroyed the will, uh, this king leaves uh, them both intact. He leaves the ability and the will. And then he says, if any man will come after me, let him deny himself, take up his cross, and follow me. When Dr. Martin Luther King spoke in 1963, many of his words were crafted from the prophets as they talked about the coming of the heavenly king. Yeah, yeah, when, when Martin spoke, I, I heard Amos declaring, and I heard Martin saying, I have a dream. That one day justice will run down like waters and righteousness like a mighty stream. I heard Isaiah declaring and Martin saying, I have a dream that one day every mountain shall be made low and every valley shall be exalted. The rough places shall be made plain and the crooked places shall be made straight and the glory of the Lord shall be revealed. Well, who is this king who has declared that the spirit of the Lord is upon me? For he has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor, to set the captive free and to heal the brokenhearted and declare the acceptable year of the Lord. Who is this king who declared that foxes have holes and birds have nests, but the son of man has nowhere to lay his head. Who is this king who taught the words to do unto others as you would have them do unto you? Who is this king who came all the way down to forty and two generations? Who is this king who was born in Bethlehem and real 
Nobody sticking no dogs on him. No, nobody putting no water holes on him. He's at rest now. And you and I can have that same rest. But in order for us to have that rest, our work must be done. You know what our work is? We got to still feed the hungry. Got to still clothe the naked. Got to still take care of the orphan. Got to still take care of the widows. Got to take care of our young boys and young girls. Our work is not done. And it won't be until we finish that work that he will say to us like he said to Mark, come on home now. Sit down and rest a little while. But until then, we walk together, children. And don't you get weary. There's a great camp meeting in the promised land. We'll get ready to extend an invitation to discipleship. And it's important that African-American people know even today that we cannot afford, you know, to, to allow ourselves, amen, to be subjugated and, and assimilated. But we've got to maintain who we are. Hispanics and Asian and Latino got to maintain who they are. Japanese and other Asians got to maintain who they are. America is a melting pot where everybody can come and we can still maintain our identity and still worship together, still praise God together, still work together, still teach together, still go, go to lunch together. Well, one thing, one, one thing Caucasian America was worried about that somehow we black men wanted to become their son-in-law. And I, I told a fellow one time, I don't want to be your son-in-law. I just want to be your friend. I just want to be your brother. I want you to be who you are, and I want to remain who I am in America. And we can assimilate together in this melting pot. I don't discriminate against you. You don't have to discriminate against me. But you know what? Along with that, you don't have to be scared of me. I don't mean you no harm. So you don't have to shoot first and ask questions later. We shouldn't have Ferguson's nowhere in this country. My son, and I'm closing. I told my son, and I'm talking about Jermaine, I said, it was my responsibility to keep you alive when you lived in Newark. That was my job. I had to teach you how to stay alive as a black man. My dad taught me how to stay alive as a black man in the South. With Jim Crow laws and segregation and racism and Ku Klux Klan and skinhead, he taught me how to stay alive. And we need to teach our young black men how to stay alive. When you're pulled over by the cop, keep both hands on the steering wheel, only follow the direction that they give you. You know, they tell you to get on the ground, get on the ground. Because the moment they have to put you on the ground, that's resisting arrest. And before you know it, you got 30 charges. And all the reason why they stopped you was because you were doing five miles over the speed limit. We, we got to do that, brothers and sisters. You got a black president, but we didn't elect him by ourselves. It took some Latinos, Latinos and some whites and some others because we are only 13% of the population. We didn't raise all the millions of dollars that he had for his campaign. Somebody else gave some money. And every time I see a, a white person who tells me that they voted for, for, for Barack Obama, I thank him. I sure do. I walk up and shake their hands and say, thank you so much. I couldn't have done it without you. All three kids had a dream. And only one of those dreams was the dream 
of seeing us walk together as brothers and sisters. If you're here today, that king I was talking about, his name is Jesus. And he said, whosoever will, let him come. No matter whether you're educated or uneducated, black, white, tall, short, skinny, fat, doesn't matter. No matter what you've done, you can come. Lie your back, buy a drug, push a drug at it. It doesn't matter. He said, whosoever will, let him come. And this is your time to come. The doors of the church are open. And come, you're here today. Come to Jesus. Oh, Will there be one who will come? offering by 